Well, hi there. Before I get into this video about what is arguably, but I think you can make a darn good argument, the coolest reptile there is, I want to start by saying if you're wondering if this animal, the green tree monitor, is the best pet reptile for you, or even a good pet reptile for you, the answer is no. Um, it, you know, if this is the question you're asking yourself, check out videos like our top five for beginners, check out our, our uh, top six monitors video. Uh, uh, the truth is, get an Aki. Get an Aki. If you're thinking, gosh, I want a monitor and I wonder what one is the right one for me, it's probably an Aki. They're phenomenal. But with that said, this monitor is amazing. They are beautiful. I, I think, I mean, the only rivals for beauty among the monitors are going to be other tree monitors, like the blue tree monitor. They're so pretty. Monitors, perhaps only with the exception of chameleons, are, they're the coolest. They're so cool. They are so neat and interesting and inquisitive and smart and uh, really, the only downside to monitors is that a lot of them are fairly drably colored. This monitor is not. This monitor is brilliantly colored. Uh, I would liken its beauty to a jeweled Lacerda, which is a very, very, very beautiful lizard, and one that we've covered in the past. Um, but then, you know, on top of having the coloration of a jeweled Lacerta, they've got the build of a monitor, and it's, but it's a silly monitor, because they very much got a good Asian monitor head, but then they're kind of lanky and silly like chameleons, and they've got a long tail, like a lot of monitors, except this monitor tail is prehensile like chameleons. So special. Then they got that forked tongue, which is typical of monitors. They can pump air down into their lungs using their throat like other monitors. They're stupendously active, like monitors generally, but maybe more so than most monitors. These guys, when it comes to just being rad, they might just take the cake. Unbelievable. This individual comes to us from Lissa, and she's an employee at Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is one of our favorite pet stores. Uh, we love Animal Ark. They, they help us and support us uh, by providing us with a lot of the animals that we show on this channel. So we're always grateful for them and we encourage you to check them out both online and on in person if you ever show up in Orem, Utah. But as I said, disappointingly, the Green Tree Monitor probably isn't the best pet reptile for you. It's probably not even a good pet reptile for you. And if you want to know why that is, or, or what are the things that you might need to be prepared for before you would be the right person for a Green Tree Monitor, then the rest of this video is going to be very, very helpful. And to, to break that down a little bit, we've scored the Green Tree Monitor on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Before we get into handleability, I'd like to take just a moment to thank our patrons at Patreon. And, uh, you know, they, they do so much for us. And to try to make it up to them a little bit, you know, we've, we've included a lot of perks with being a patron at Patreon. And one of them is that in our live stream question and answer videos, we've tried to take a lot of questions in advance from them. I don't get to see those questions, but Jason does. That way, I, I'm seeing them for the first time when, when he reads them to me. But we give special priority to those questions at the beginning of our video. We usually start off with a lot of those. And that's just one of the things that we do as our way of saying thank you for all that you do for us. And now let's get to handleability. When it comes to handleability, and this will be surprising given how amazing this individual is, but this individual, it is captive bred and very, very socialized and really not quite typical of what green tree monitors are like. I should mention up front that they do get a bit bigger than this. This one uh, was bought as a captive bred baby and uh, it's been growing up quite nicely, but it's not fully grown quite yet. Generally speaking, 
what you're going to see when you see green tree monitors for sale are going to be adults. And uh, they're usually wild caught. Well, they'll tell you they're farmed, but they're probably wild caught and they're nervous and flighty. Uh, this is a, a monitor that is not going to like to be handled. It's going to try to escape from you and monitors are smart. And so if you don't build a good relationship with them and you just try to force handling on them, they're never going to like to be handled by you. They're not super bitey, which is great because monitor bites are pretty nasty. And with regular work, especially as you build a relationship with them, they can become quite social and excellent, but it's going to take work, you know? And, and so one of the things is going to be uh, to make your interactions with them very, very positive for a very long time. That's going to be a great place to start. Their claws are sharp because this is a tree monitor. They're sharp. And now this is a lightweight monitor also, but they certainly can scratch you up quite a bit with these claws. They're not usually going to use them as weapons, but they're there and you will feel them. One thing that I love about tree monitors is that they're very good at holding on. And I love that they won't drop their tail. This, this tail is prehensile. They use this as part of their, their package of things to keep themselves from falling. And I mean, you can use the tail of a monitor as a leash because they cannot drop it. And that is magnificent. That said, the biggest key with green tree monitors will be to only handle them on their terms. Never force handling on them. Allow them to climb onto you, explore you, never restrain them. You're building a relationship and your ability to handle them at all will be entirely dependent on having a good relationship with your monitor. And once you have that relationship, the next key will be not to overdo it because it would be tempting to just carry this around with you all the time. And that's too much cold and too much stress for them. They're generally not very good for handling, but under the right circumstances, and especially if you start with a captive bred baby, they can be pretty amazing. When it comes to care, we give the Green Tree Monitor a score of two out of five. One thing to begin with is they're gonna eat a lot of insects and small vertebrate feeders. Uh, this isn't particularly hard to provide. It's just that for a monitor this size, well, for a lizard this size, they've got a very fast metabolism and they will enjoy a lot of those. Hydration though is the biggest key with these guys, especially when you first get them in, but all the time. You could easily lose one to dehydration. And so making sure that they have access to water both in a bowl and uh, with frequent mistings and high humidity levels, this is gonna be essential if you want your monitor to survive. They also need a big enclosure with a lot of space to climb. Like I mentioned, this one is not fully grown. They get quite a bit bigger than this. Not, not huge, they're still a fairly small monitor, but a lot bigger than this. And they're gonna need a lot of space to climb and explore. They're super active. And so you are probably going to need to build an enclosure for them. Make sure when you build that enclosure that you favor vertical space for them to climb. They need a lot of that, don't you? And in order for them to be able to climb, they need not only the space in the enclosure, but they're gonna need a lot of branches and things that they can climb upon. And then on top of that, they're gonna need a lot of heat and UV. So that's gonna be the proper lighting. The biggest thing with these guys is just that they need a lot of continuous maintenance or they can just die on you. Okay, and that's the thing with these guys, it, you know, it's, it's that you have to get this enclosure and, and the care spot on from the beginning and you need to be consistent about it always because they can be pretty fragile and we'll talk about that later. And that's why care is such a low score for them because it is so important and you have to be so spot on with it. When it comes to hardiness, we've already foreshadowed this, the Green Tree Monitor gets a score of two out of five. In a lot of ways, they're basically a chameleon in a monitor package. Um, they live a very similar lifestyle to chameleons. They're longer lived than our most chameleons, but they are prone to crashing if their enclosure and you know their care isn't spot on, just like chameleons are. So just like with chameleons, make sure you have this perfect before you get a lizard. They do not tolerate mistakes. And imports, when you get an import, which the vast majority of them are imports, too many mistakes may have already occurred for them. And you might spend hundreds of dollars and then just get to watch this lizard die. Nobody wants that. 
Dehydration, like I already said, is gonna be the biggest killer, especially of imports, at least immediate killers. Uh, they're gonna come in and they're gonna be dehydrated and they can die from this very, very quickly. So you need to get them rehydrated fast once you have them in your care. Uh, more long-term, you're gonna need to deal with internal parasites um, and, and of course, proper feeding. These guys have a fast metabolism and they're light-bodied so they don't store a lot of energy but they need a lot of energy, so they need to be fed every day, maybe every couple days, almost like keeping a mammal. The biggest thing, get it right from the start and never quit. When it comes to availability, we give the Green Tree Monitor a score of one out of five. You will see these online and sometimes at expos, very, very rarely in pet stores, and those that you see are almost all imports. We've already mentioned big problems with imports. They're very, very, very rarely available captive bred. And, uh, you know, I, I said they're imports. Most of the people who are importing them are gonna claim that they've been farm bred, but really they're probably wild caught. There are a lot of laws around the export and importation of these lizards that require them to not be wild caught, but the truth is a lot of them probably are. So keep in mind, when you buy an import, not only are you buying a fragile lizard, but you're damaging the wild population of these guys, and this is a lizard we do not want to lose, and it's one that is so glorious that we easily could lose them. That said, there are some phenomenal monitor breeders out there. One of them that I know personally is Great Basin Serpentarium, and I know they're starting to work with tree monitors. There are other people who are having regular success breeding them. They're out there, and that is absolutely the way to go. That said, everybody wants one for good reason. So just find where these breeders are and get on their waiting list, and then expect to pay a lot for that baby. But the thing is, say you spend twice as much on the baby. Well, the difference is it will live. This is one of those captive bred babies and it is outstanding and alive. And just the probability of you having success with this lizard go through the roof if you get one captive bred. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Green Tree Monitor a score of two out of five. The monitor is gonna cost many hundreds of dollars. I'm probably in the ballpark of $1,000, give or take. Uh, in addition to this quite expensive lizard, you're gonna need a pretty big enclosure. Not as big as you'd need for some of the larger monitors, but for a monitor this size, and especially the size that they get to, uh, big, pretty big. And, and you're gonna have to build it yourself or have somebody build it for you and that can be pretty expensive. Like we mentioned before, uh, they're gonna need a lot of heat and UV bulbs. Uh, and as well as the, the lamps that go along with those. They're gonna need a water bowl. I would recommend a misting system because you gotta keep humidity up and you gotta mist them regularly. And I would just recommend having a misting system in there. They're gonna need a lot of large climbing branches. You're gonna need a substrate that holds moisture but won't mold. And, and the real key is you need to make sure that you have all of this stuff and it's all perfect before you get the lizard. And so we've got links to all these things down in the description. If you do think that a green tree monitor is right for you, which I'm telling you, if you're wondering, it's not. So you're one of those people who is a very, very, very experienced keeper. And, and you know that a, a monitor, this particular monitor, a green tree monitor, you're ready for it. Be all the way ready for it. Get everything and have it dialed in and perfect before your lizard ever arrives. And these are the reasons that we give the Green Tree Monitor a score of 1.8 out of 5. A lot of people were requesting that this monitor show up on our list of six of the best pet monitors. And I will tell you, it wasn't even close. Not for a second did we consider putting this monitor on this list. I can also tell you, I love these. And this experience, interacting with this one, has done nothing but to cause that love to explode and I adore this animal and I want one so bad. And I can tell you, I'm not getting one anytime soon. But when I do, and that day may come for me, when I do get one, I can promise you it will be captive bred and I will be 100% ready for it before it ever gets here. The real problem that happens with these lizards is they're, they're irresponsibly sourced. So people get them uh, really technically illegally 
in a way that might drive the populations to extinction. So they're, Ill they're, they're illegally sourced, totally irresponsible. On top of that, they're just about ready to crash. They're bought on an impulse because they encounter this thing and they're like, I have, I have to have one and I totally get that because that's how I feel right now. I have to have one of these, but you'll get it and you will have one for a few days, maybe a few weeks, and then you will not have one anymore and you will have really done something awful. Uh, don't, don't make that mistake. Love it. Get ready for it. Spend years preparing for it. Find it captive bred. And then, oh, what an incredible lizard this is. As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. I have a spider on me. Okay, I get it. Kill it with fire. Ooh. Hi. That was a jump. Yeah. They are good jumpers. Oh wow. Clint the tree. That makes a good tree. Hi. Why are you so great? I'm going to the chair. Oh, he's gonna slide. Whoa. He jumped to the chair and did it. Good. That was the easiest way to get him off of me. <laughs> they are definitely my favorite. They're magnificent. Handleability. Care. Uh oh. <laughs> Look at that hat. It's <laughs> hair. Uh, you're going to need a substrate that holds a lot of humidity but won't mold. Okay, let's stop that. Yep. I'm in danger of having a new favorite reptile. Yeah, I'm not joking. Like, I... Super fun to handle. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're so perfect. Do that again. She is perfection. I love it. You silly goose.